The alien fleet hovered above Earth, their ships casting long shadows over the planet's surface. From orbit, Earth looked peaceful, a lush world teeming with life but lacking any visible defenses. To the alien commanders, it was a strange oversight. They had encountered numerous advanced civilizations in their conquests, each one boasting formidable space defenses, planetary shields, or at least some show of resistance. Earth, by comparison, seemed almost too easy. The data they had gathered before the invasion painted a picture of a planet with rudimentary technology, no interstellar capability, and no apparent understanding of galactic politics. It was as if the inhabitants were blissfully unaware of the dangers lurking just beyond their atmosphere. The aliens interpreted this as naivety, a weakness they could exploit. The decision to invade had been made swiftly. Earth was a desirable target, not just for its resources but for its strategic location on the outer edges of the galactic trade routes. Controlling Earth would give the alien empire a foothold in an otherwise unclaimed sector. And judging by the planet's lack of preparation, it would be a simple victory. Alien scouts had already mapped out Earth's major cities, identifying key infrastructure and military sites. In their arrogance, the aliens didn't expect to meet significant resistance. Their early assault teams deployed with precision, descending through the atmosphere with the intent to seize control of communications and disable any terrestrial defense systems. What little resistance they encountered was brushed aside easily. The invaders landed in major cities with impunity, their advanced technology overpowering the rudimentary weapons Earth had to offer. From the outset, it appeared Earth had nothing to offer in return. The alien invaders met little in the way of organized military defense. Human forces were scattered and overwhelmed, their outdated technology no match for the advanced weaponry of the alien soldiers. Entire sections of cities were taken without a single shot fired in retaliation. To the alien commanders, this was the beginning of an easy conquest. But something felt strange. There was no widespread panic among the population, no desperate attempts to flee or fight back. The humans, while clearly unprepared for the invasion, didn't react as the aliens had anticipated. Even in the face of overwhelming odds, they remained calm, almost as if they were waiting for something. The alien commanders noted this but dismissed it as shock. Humans must have been paralyzed by fear. It was the only explanation that made sense. The invasion continued. Alien forces spread across the planet, securing key locations with ease. Major cities fell within hours, and the alien command centers recorded minimal casualties. They sent reports back to their empire, confirming that Earth was exactly as they had expected, defenseless, weak and ripe for the taking. There was no reason to worry. The human race, they believed, was on the verge of submission. Yet, beneath the surface, things were not as they seemed. Unbeknownst to the alien invaders, humanity was not as unprepared as they had been led to believe. While Earth had no grand space fleets or planetary shields, they had been observing the galaxy for years, quietly preparing for the possibility of an extraterrestrial threat. Hidden surveillance systems, deep space telescopes, and encrypted communication networks had been set up long before the alien fleet arrived. The humans had been watching, waiting for the moment they would be forced to act. As the alien forces spread across the planet, they failed to notice the subtle changes happening around them. Earth's communication networks, which the aliens believed they had disabled, continued to function in the shadows. Hidden systems, designed to appear primitive, were in fact rerouting data, coordinating a global response that the aliens could not detect. Human governments and military organizations were in constant communication, sharing intelligence and preparing for a counter-strike that the aliens wouldn't see coming. The first signs of trouble appeared when small disruptions started occurring in the alien command networks. At first, they were dismissed as technical glitches, the kind that sometimes happened during planetary invasions. But as the hours passed, these disruptions became more frequent and more severe. Alien ships in orbit began reporting system failures. Communications went offline, targeting systems malfunctioned, and entire fleets lost contact with their ground forces. The alien commanders, still confident in their superiority, assumed these were minor setbacks. They sent engineers to fix the problems, unaware that these disruptions were not random. 
humanity had begun its counterattack, not with brute force but with precision and subtlety. The humans had infiltrated the alien communication networks, using advanced algorithms to disable key systems without revealing their presence. Every move was calculated, every disruption designed to weaken the invaders without provoking an immediate response. As the alien forces began to realize something was wrong, it was already too late. Their ground troops, spread thin across Earth's surface, found themselves isolated, cut off from their command centers. Alien soldiers, once so confident in their technological superiority, were suddenly unable to contact their superiors, unable to request reinforcements. They were trapped, surrounded by a human population that had yet to fully reveal its strength. The aliens, for the first time, began to feel a sense of unease. Earth was not as defenseless as they had believed. The humans, while technologically inferior in many ways, had outmaneuvered them on a strategic level. It wasn't a full-blown counterattack, but a series of small, calculated moves that left the alien invaders off balance and uncertain. They had come expecting a quick and easy victory, but now they were beginning to see that Earth was far more dangerous than they had anticipated. Alien commanders scrambled to regain control of the situation, but their efforts were met with increasing resistance. Human forces, previously hidden, began to emerge from the shadows. Specialized units, equipped with advanced weaponry that had been kept secret from the rest of the galaxy, launched targeted strikes against alien supply lines and communication hubs. The invaders, who had once felt so confident in their control over the planet, were now finding themselves on the defensive. The humans were still invisible, their tactics precise and methodical. They didn't engage in open warfare. There was no need for that. Instead, they struck from the shadows, disabling key systems, dismantling alien infrastructure, and leaving the invaders with fewer and fewer options. Every move the aliens made was countered, every attempt to regroup thwarted by an enemy they couldn't see. It was a strategy the aliens had never encountered before. In their arrogance, they had expected Earth to fight like other species, openly, desperately, and ultimately, unsuccessfully. But humanity was different. They didn't need grand fleets or advanced technology to win. They had something far more dangerous, patience, intelligence, and the ability to turn even the smallest advantage into victory. The alien commanders, once so sure of their conquest, now faced an unsettling truth. Earth was not defenseless and the humans, far from being the easy prey they had imagined, were quietly. The invaders pushed further into Earth's cities, believing their dominance was inevitable. Alien soldiers patrolled streets that had gone eerily quiet. They expected the humans to be in disarray, panicking in the face of an unstoppable force. Instead, they found a strange calm that unsettled them. Buildings stood intact, civilians moved with quiet purpose and the usual chaos of occupation was absent. There were no riots, no desperate attempts at resistance, only silence and order. It wasn't fear that hung in the air, it was something else, something they couldn't place. As alien ground forces moved to secure critical infrastructure, subtle signs of resistance began to emerge. A ship's landing zone was suddenly without power. Entire convoys lost track of their routes, their navigation systems inexplicably scrambled. Communication lines, which had been secured only hours before, started glitching. At first, these seemed like technical errors, small inconveniences that could be easily fixed. But as the disruptions grew more frequent, it became clear that these were no accidents. Human forces had begun to act, but not in the way the aliens expected. There were no large armies marching to meet the invaders, no tanks rolling down the streets to engage them. Instead, the attacks were surgical, precise, and utterly invisible. Alien supply chains were quietly severed, their patrols left stranded as drones, unseen and undetected, intercepted their routes. What little information the alien commanders could piece together pointed to one fact. Earth was not responding with brute force, but with something far more efficient. The invaders' command structure started to fray. Reports from different sectors painted an increasingly grim picture. Ships still in orbit were losing contact with the ground teams, their systems jammed by unknown sources. Alien engineers worked tirelessly to restore order, 
but nothing seemed to work. The more they tried to re-establish control, the worse it became. For every system they brought back online, two more would go down. The humans weren't just countering their invasion, they were playing with them. Ground troops became more disoriented. At night, their camps were infiltrated by automated machines that dismantled key equipment. No human footprints, no evidence of sabotage, just the quiet, methodical removal of their supplies and resources. Weapons caches vanished, transport vehicles were found disabled, and communication towers that had stood strong were reduced to twisted wreckage by the time the sun rose. The aliens began to feel it, that growing dread creeping in at the edges of their once certain confidence. As hours turned to days, the invaders' frustration boiled over. Orders were shouted, stricter measures were taken, but none of it changed the fact that they were losing control. Their arrogance was turning into confusion, confusion into fear. It wasn't just the attacks themselves, it was the fact that they couldn't understand how it was happening. No humans were ever seen. There were no battles, no firefights. Just loss after loss, without explanation. Alien commanders gathered in their temporary bases, their meetings growing more frantic by the hour. They had the numbers, the superior firepower, yet nothing seemed to stop the human retaliation. Every time they thought they had secured a zone, something new would happen, another disruption, another sabotage. It was as though the planet itself was fighting back, not with rage, but with cold, calculated precision. Reports from the field painted a picture of chaos. Troops abandoned their posts, unable to trust their own equipment. Ships in orbit experienced unexplained malfunctions, their engines shutting down mid-flight, forcing emergency landings. Those that remained in the sky watched helplessly as their counterparts fell, unable to comprehend the nature of their enemy. The humans remained unseen, their actions as quiet as they were devastating. What unnerved the invaders the most was that there was no pattern to follow no traditional battlefield logic. The humans were fighting on their own terms, using their knowledge of their own planet to their advantage. Entire battalions were found wandering aimlessly, their navigation systems hopelessly corrupted by unknown sources. Alien soldiers who had once moved with military precision now found themselves lost, both physically and mentally. One commander, desperate for answers, demanded a direct offensive against any remaining human strongholds. They assumed that somewhere, hidden beneath the surface, humanity's last resistance would finally show itself. Alien troops descended on what they believed to be a command center, only to find empty buildings, unmanned systems, and nothing that explained the coordinated attacks they were facing. The humans had moved on long before the aliens had arrived. What the invaders had expected to be a decisive strike turned into a chase for ghosts. They followed traces of human presence only to arrive at locations that had been abandoned days, even weeks, before. It was as though the humans had anticipated every move, as if they had known exactly how the invasion would unfold from the very beginning. Alien leaders, once confident in their superior strategy, now found themselves outmaneuvered at every turn. Attempts to regroup were met with the same silence. For every new tactic they tried, the humans had already anticipated it. And still, no human faces were seen. Just machines, drones, and systems that seemed to work independently of any centralized command. The aliens couldn't even be sure who or what they were fighting anymore. Panic began to spread through the ranks. Soldiers, already stretched thin, started abandoning posts altogether. They whispered of an enemy that was everywhere and nowhere, an invisible force that moved through the shadows, dismantling their invasion one piece at a time. It wasn't just that the humans were winning, it was the way they were winning. Without confrontation, without battle cries or visible armies. The invaders felt as though they were being hunted, but they couldn't see the hunters. In their desperation, alien commanders resorted to more drastic measures. Bombardments, once limited to strategic targets, now spread indiscriminately. But for every city block they reduced to rubble, another key piece of their own infrastructure failed. Their ships fell from the sky, their troops stranded in unfamiliar territory, cut off from any hope of escape. The humans didn't need to fight back with equal force. They simply let the invaders destroy themselves. As their situation grew more desperate, 
the invaders began to realize the truth. Earth was not defenseless. It never had been. The humans had been watching, waiting, and when the time came, they didn't need to meet their enemy head on. They let the invaders' arrogance do the work for them. The planet, once considered primitive and weak, had become a fortress, not because of its weapons, but because of its people's ability to think beyond brute force. The aliens had misjudged Earth entirely. What they had taken for weakness was actually patience, strategy, and a deep understanding of how to fight a war without ever showing your hand. Now, as their fleets burned and their troops scattered, the invaders understood one thing clearly, Earth was far from defenseless. And the humans were far more dangerous than they had ever imagined. The cracks in the alien forces widened with every passing hour. What had once been a finely tuned invasion force was now a disorganized collection of disconnected units, each trying to make sense of the chaos around them. The commanders, once full of arrogance and certainty, found themselves in a nightmare they couldn't control. Reports of malfunctioning systems, missing supplies, and stranded troops filled their screens. Each attempt to re-establish control met with failure. Earth, which they had thought would be easily subdued, was dismantling their entire operation without ever engaging in direct combat. The human counteroffensive was now in full swing, but it wasn't what the aliens had expected. No grand battles, no desperate last stands. Just silence, methodical strikes, and the constant unraveling of everything the aliens had built. Across the planet, Alien strongholds were falling apart. Communications were increasingly unreliable, with ground teams unable to contact their ships in orbit. Alien patrols sent out to search for human resistance found nothing but deserted streets and malfunctioning equipment. It became clear that humanity had turned the very systems the aliens depended on against them. Earth's defense systems were no longer hidden. Human technologies, long underestimated, were now fully operational. Invisible drones hovered in the skies, armed with weapons designed for precision and disruption. Automated ground defenses, once dormant, now engaged alien forces with ruthless efficiency. The aliens, caught in the crossfire, couldn't understand how they had lost control so quickly. For every countermeasure they deployed, the humans had already anticipated it. Human ships, equipped with advanced plasma weaponry, began to appear in orbit. They weren't the crude, underpowered vessels the aliens had expected. These were sleek, fast, and armed with technology that matched, even surpassed, the alien fleets. What had once been a secure invasion turned into a retreat as the alien ships in orbit found themselves under attack from a force they had never considered capable of such coordination. Alien fleets, scattered and disoriented, tried to regroup, but the human ships moved faster than expected, outmaneuvering them at every turn. Plasma cannons ripped through alien hulls with terrifying accuracy. Entire wings of the invasion fleet were destroyed before they could even return fire. The alien commanders, accustomed to being the superior force in every battle, found themselves on the losing side, unable to predict the humans' next move. On the ground, things were even worse. Alien forces, cut off from their commanders, were being systematically dismantled. Human drones and automated strike units targeted supply lines, fuel depots, and command centers with pinpoint accuracy. The humans were still faceless, still unseen, but their presence was felt in every action. Alien troops, once proud and disciplined, were now panicking. They had never faced an enemy like this, one that fought without ever showing itself, one that always seemed to be several steps ahead. Alien commanders, desperate to regain some semblance of control, ordered their ground forces to regroup and hold their positions. But it was futile. The humans were everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Alien tanks and transports, sent to reinforce key positions, were disabled en route by traps and sabotage. Entire convoys vanished, their wreckage discovered days later, with no signs of human engagement just precision strikes that left the alien forces defenseless. As the alien commanders watched the collapse of their forces, they realized that they had gravely misjudged Earth. Their plans had been based on outdated assumptions, assumptions that humans were primitive, that they lacked the technological sophistication to resist. 
but what they had never considered was the possibility that humans had simply hidden their capabilities, waiting for the right moment to strike. Earth had revealed its true strength, and it wasn't in the form of massive fleets or planetary shields. It was in the humans' ability to turn the tide of war without ever needing to meet their enemy head-on. The invaders, with all their technological prowess, had been outmatched not by brute force, but by human ingenuity and strategy. Alien morale crumbled. Commanders who had once barked orders with confidence were now issuing frantic calls for retreat. Troops on the ground, sensing their leader's desperation, began abandoning their posts. Those who remained fought in a state of confusion, their once unbreakable lines scattered by an enemy they couldn't see, much less engage. In the skies above, the alien fleet's retreat had already begun. What remained of their once mighty armada was now limping out of orbit, damaged and broken. Human ships pursued them, firing at will, cutting off escape routes and ensuring that the retreat was as devastating as possible. The alien commanders, faced with the complete collapse of their invasion, knew they had no choice but to flee. But even that was no longer guaranteed. Human forces, now in full control of the situation, continued their assault. Alien ships that tried to escape into hyperspace found their engines disabled by human disruptors. Those that made it to the jump points were intercepted, their ships destroyed before they could flee. For the first time in their history, the alien fleet was not just defeated, it was annihilated. On the ground, alien troops who had once believed in their unstoppable empire were now left stranded, their communications severed, their commanders either dead or fleeing. They were now the hunted, surrounded by a planet they had once thought defenseless. The humans gave them no mercy. Automated strike units, unmanned drones, and remote-controlled weapon systems targeted them with terrifying precision. Alien squads, once formidable, were picked off one by one, their forces reduced to remnants scattered across a world they no longer understood. The alien commanders, those who had survived, tried to organize a final stand. But their troops were too scattered, their resources too depleted. They had no hope of regrouping. Human forces were everywhere, their tactics relentless and efficient. What had once been a strategic invasion had turned into a slow, methodical dismantling of everything the aliens had brought with them. In their last moments, the alien leaders understood the magnitude of their failure. Earth had never been defenseless. The humans had simply allowed them to believe it, waiting for the right moment to reveal their true power. The aliens had underestimated not just humanity's technology, but their resilience, their ability to adapt, and their willingness to fight on their own terms. As the final alien ships fell from the sky, the invasion was over. The humans had won, not through overwhelming firepower, but through strategy, patience, and precision. The aliens, who had once believed themselves the conquerors of the galaxy, had been brought to their knees by a species they had dismissed as primitive. Now, in the wreckage of their defeat, they finally understood the true strength of Earth. And with that, the galaxy would never view humanity the same way again. The remnants of the alien fleet drifted in silence, their once mighty warships reduced to smoldering debris. What had begun as a confident invasion was now a memory of catastrophic failure. The alien commanders who survived could scarcely believe how it had unfolded. They had believed Earth to be defenseless, a weak and isolated world ripe for conquest. Instead, they had discovered something far more terrifying, a species that knew how to wait, how to mislead, and how to strike with surgical precision. Across the galaxy, news of the defeat spread quickly. The alien empire, known for its domination of weaker species, was now reeling from a humiliation they had never experienced before. Other alien civilizations, many of whom had watched the invasion with mild interest, now scrambled to reevaluate their perceptions of Earth. The message was clear. Earth was no longer a backwater planet. Humanity had proven that they were not only capable of defending themselves, but capable of doing so with a level of sophistication and ruthlessness that shook the galactic order. Back on the alien homeworld, the leaders who had once advocated for the invasion now faced the consequences of their arrogance. Their empire had been built on the belief that they were the most powerful force in the galaxy, but that belief had crumbled. The aftermath of the invasion revealed the fragility of their position. 
Reports of the defeat were met with disbelief, then anger, and finally fear. The once proud military leaders who had boasted of an easy victory now struggled to explain how everything had gone so wrong. Civilians, once supportive of the invasion, now demanded answers. How had their superior forces been decimated by a planet they had been assured was technologically backward? How had their mighty fleet been reduced to rubble without a single decisive battle? The more they learned, the more they realized that their leadership had been operating under dangerous assumptions. Earth had been playing a different game from the start, and the invaders had fallen right into their trap. What was most unsettling to the alien population was the nature of Earth's victory. There had been no grand speeches, no ultimatums, no displays of power before the invasion began. The humans had simply let the invaders come. They had allowed the alien forces to land, to establish footholds, and then, methodically, piece by piece, they had dismantled the invasion without ever showing their hand. The aliens had been fighting a war they couldn't understand, against an enemy they had never truly seen. On the galactic stage, Earth's reputation transformed overnight. Governments that had once ignored the distant blue planet now scrambled to make contact, not out of fear of invasion, but out of respect for a power they had never anticipated. Diplomatic channels opened, with offers of alliances and trade agreements pouring in. No one wanted to provoke humanity now. The humans had shown what they were capable of when threatened, and no one was eager to see what they would do if pushed further. The alien empire, now weakened, found itself isolated. Other species that had once been allies distanced themselves, not wanting to be associated with the failure. Some quietly congratulated Earth, sending messages of solidarity, hoping to avoid the humans' wrath. The galaxy was shifting, and at the center of this shift was the very species the aliens had once dismissed as irrelevant. For the alien leaders, the lesson was a bitter one. They had assumed that Earth's lack of visible defenses meant that the planet was vulnerable. They had believed that humanity's absence from the galactic stage indicated weakness. But they had miscalculated. Earth's quiet, unassuming stance had been a deliberate choice. The humans had been watching, preparing for the day when they would need to defend themselves, and they had done so with an efficiency that stunned the galaxy. The cost of their arrogance was now clear. The alien empire, once dominant, was fractured. In the weeks following the invasion, internal divisions deepened. Factions that had supported the war blamed those who had underestimated the humans, and infighting erupted across the empire. What had once been a unified force was now splintering, with each group trying to distance itself from the disaster. Their leadership, weakened and discredited, struggled to maintain control as the empire teetered on the brink of collapse. Meanwhile, Earth remained silent. There were no triumphant broadcasts, no demands for reparations or tribute. The humans did not seek to conquer or expand their influence by force. They had defended their world, and in doing so, they had demonstrated that they were not to be trifled with. Now, they returned to the shadows, content to let the galaxy draw its own conclusions. But the galaxy would not forget. Every alien species that had once looked down on Earth now understood the truth. Humans were dangerous in ways they had never considered. Their strength was not in their weapons or their ships, but in their ability to turn their enemies' own assumptions against them. They had defeated an empire without ever revealing the full extent of their capabilities, and that made them more formidable than anyone had realized. For the alien empire, there was no easy recovery. Their fleets were gone, their resources depleted, and their reputation shattered. They had been the architects of their own downfall, driven by pride and a refusal to see Earth as anything other than a target. Now, they were forced to face the consequences of their actions, watching as their influence faded and their former allies turned their backs on them. In exile, the alien commanders who had led the invasion reflected on their mistakes. They had believed they were invincible, that no species could stand against their might. But Earth had taught them a lesson they would never forget. They had learned, too late, that strength comes not just from visible power, but from the ability to outthink, outmaneuver, and outlast your enemy. And so, the galaxy moved forward with a new understanding. Earth was no longer the quiet, unassuming planet on the edge of known space. It was a force to be respected, a reminder that sometimes, 
the greatest threats are the ones you never see coming. The aliens had once sought to conquer Earth, to make the humans fear them. Now, it was the aliens who had learned to fear Earth.